First of all, just really quick, uh, give me a, a brief overview of what Global Wireless Solutions does. Yep. So um, our primary focus is to perform network testing uh, on the wireless in networks across the United States and internationally. So we, we assess the network performance aspect of, of the, the networks, and um, we, we look at, do things like um, evaluate drop calls, block calls, uh, you know, and other, and other sort of network performance-related parameters. Okay, and what I have noticed about 5G um, is that there is such a, a divide between the excitement over it and the the fear of it. Uh, there, there are people, many of us, who are super excited to have incredibly fast data connections and, and all the implications of that for first responders and other cool applications. And then there's other people who are burning them down. So, first of all, um, Maybe I just want to ask you, are these instances of, of burning towers down and things like that, are are they isolated or are they kind of prevalent? And and where are these people coming from? Well, I mean, that's a great question. I, and I think you hit the nail on the head with your in your in your question with the word fear. I think there's a there's a certain degree of fear today with um with, with the current population. There's there's a in you know, people are unsettled for a variety of reasons, but COVID being one of them. And I think people are not not quite understanding what's happening in their environment, and as a result, there, there's, there's fear, and fear is easily spread, uh, particularly by social media. And so I, I think that um, people have sort of aligned or misaligned some some things that are happening at the same time, and, and sort of suggesting that that perhaps COVID and 5G are happening at a similar time, therefore there must be some sort of relationship. Uh, in terms of in terms of whether or not um, the uh, the attacks on on the 5G sites and, and actually 4G sites is 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 isolated, I think predominantly they've been in the UK and in other parts of Europe. Haven't seen any signs of that occurring yet in the US. Um, and I I think you know the misinformation, if you like, has been greater there. Um, obviously, well, not obviously, but but 5G is is um, delivered through wireless communications, just like our existing two, you know, one through 4G, and um, and so many of the frequencies that are being used for 5G are exactly the same frequencies that were previously being used for 4G and, and other te and other previous generations of technology. So, you know, um, it, it's it, people are people always have a right to question. But um, it really, they really should, you know, do some more, some more digging to, to, before they get too panicked about this. Yeah, let's talk more about the the, the same frequency things because, honest, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know what the real difference is between 4G and 5G, other than the fact that it's faster. But I don't know why it's faster. I don't know if it's a different kind of signal. Uh, could you explain that? Yeah. So, you know, 5G by definition is the fifth generation of wireless communication. So. Um, over the last 40 or so years, we've been from 1G to 2 to 3 to 4, and now we're going over to 5. The first generation was analog voice. Um, the second generation of uh, technology uh, was digital voice. And then the third generation is when we started to use more data. And um, and, and then the fourth generation was focused on um, actually, digit, you know, um, again, a, a higher speed of data, which is basically – enabled us to use our smartphones with so many different apps that we use on a daily basis and, and have access to to all of the things that we, we do today. Um, those technologies have evolved over time and in fact, you know, even in, in 4G there are, have been an evolution of their technologies and 5G is, is another technology but again, fundamentally, the way that the, these wireless networks are delivered to the, the, the device that you're using, the handset, is 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 wirelessly, and so that those are through FCC um, auctioned spectrum, and um, and so with 5G there are new there is new spectrum being allocated, um, but but the existing spectrum that's been again around for a long time will continue to be reused. The, the higher speed part of the higher speed comes in the fact that you, there was there are brought there's more spectrum available, and so. There are now some microwave bands which are higher frequencies than the current spectrum that are being used in some situations in, in right now in, in sort of very urbanized areas. Um, but the broader the broader 5G that you get today um, with with 
people like AT&T and, and T-Mobile, those are reusing existing or, or low band spectrum. And um, the and, and so um, so in terms of the the why the, the question you asked about why do you get faster speeds? Well, right now in for example the other just a week or so ago, Nokia in their lab combined a whole bunch of spectrum together to get a speed of up to 4.7 gigabits per second, and that was again partly because of the newer technology, which is more efficient than the older technology. But it's, but it's partly because it's just a lot more spectrum that's been put together, and that's what 5G will, will allow. That's one of the pieces of 5G, at least. Uh, I think a, a question that maybe some people has, have is how much this is being regulated. Um, are governments checking out to make sure that there's not health concerns? Oh, it's entirely regulated. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, all of the regular agencies that that, um, that 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 look into these sorts of things have 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 continued to um, determine that that if 4G, 5G is safe to use. Um, you, you know, there, there are all sorts of government agencies, domestically and internationally, that, that that sort of do that. But the higher, typically, the higher the the frequency that you use, the the shorter the distance of the travel as well from it, it actually doesn't travel as far. And so that's one of the reasons why, for example, um, these, the, the higher millimeter wave frequencies are being used just in urban areas right now because they don't, you don't have the coverage from those sites. And typically, in order to get the inc increased density of, of, of uh, capacity, um, those, those sites are, going, are starting to be put on um, sort of lamppost heights as well. So, yeah, all of that is regulated, and um, that you know the, the power levels that you can transmit are, are, are lower as as you go higher. So, as you go higher in frequency, so so it's it's um, you know there, sh it, there really shouldn't be a concern. So you're saying when we get higher frequencies, we we dial down the power to um, kind of even out the amount of. I don't even know how I don't even know the, the word you yeah. use, but the type of energy that's that's bombarding our bodies, we're we're kind of equaling that out by trading off frequency and power. Yes, and also, like I said, the other piece of it is that it just doesn't travel as far anyway. Um, the, the 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 more the, the higher the frequency, it, it just free space path loss will 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 stop it from traveling that far anyway, which is why you have to put more sites to to support the higher frequencies. Um, but that's but the advantage is that there's more spectrum available there, and so um, that, that's where you can get some of the potential benefits from 5G that that, that we're, people are talking about. And and so um, you know, it's 5G over time will be a combination of of a lot of different things, uh, some of which will just be, for example, IoT or, or having billions of sensors deployed around the world to make measurements on you know, environmental factors and to, to help farmers with uh, watering their plants. There's, there's a lot that, that 5G will support. 5G, in a way, is just the network, but it, it's going to need a lot around, built around it in order to, live, to deliver all the promise that we've talked about. Um, autonomous cars is one of those things, for example. Obviously, if you build a network, a high-speed, low-latency network, then that's appropriate for autonomous cars, but then you need to do a lot of other development in terms of smart cities and and traffic management and new new you know capabilities within the cars and insurance and regulation there's all sorts of other things that need to occur in order to have an autonomous car not just the technology of the network so um that's why you know i think i think that's another reason why there's been some concern about 5g i think we've understood in a clearer way each transition from 3g to 4g and so on and we've understood what new benefits come with it but I think it's harder for us to, to understand the benefits that 5G will give just because they're so broad. And actually, they're, they're, you know, if you like, they're such a step change from where we are today. Yeah, I, I do wonder whether maybe people, um, you know, they're, they're pinning their fears on things like COVID-19 or, or health things. But I, I think maybe people are just scared about how much how fast the world is changing. And this is definitely one sign of – like you said, we're reaching the point where the the places technology is going, it's it's almost impossible for us to imagine even five or six years out from now. It's it's kind of scary to people how fast things are changing. Yeah, I think that's true to to a certain degree. I mean, I, you know, we've we've done surveys asking people different, uh, you know, what they want for the future and so on. And we did a survey in the UK 
of business of businesses just in February, asking them what sort of communication was appropriate uh, for different different business scenarios. For example, if you have to tell an employee um, some bad news, or if you have to deal with a big issue with a customer, or if you or, or employees to employees, you know what's what's most effective? Should you text somebody? Should you email them? Should you have a face to face conversation with them? Should you could you have a call on the phone with them? We asked them all these sorts of questions, and surprisingly in February I think something like typically three to five percent of the time the businesses thought that video communication was the right way to communicate that was pre-COVID and and so you know immediately now the likes of Zoom and so on we're all so familiar with it and for for day-to-day business activities we've become so used to it so quickly and when we do get used to it it's hard to go back it's hard to change but it does take that sort of um, in, an initial getting over that initial inertia in order to understand the benefits of the technology. And, 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 we, and like I said, it's hard for us sometimes to think forward. Um, but when we have the technology available to us, we really don't want to go backwards. Well, thanks so much. That's all my questions. Um, you can just add anything else if, if there's any points you wanted to make. Um, no, I think I think probably covered a lot of them. That, that's perfect. Thank you. Sure, I think we covered a lot. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thanks so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you.